Welcome or welcome back to Chris Greeno's Garage. I'm Chris. And I'm Chris. And this channel is definitely named after me. No, it's named after me because I won the rock, paper, scissors. I don't remember this at all. It's because you're dumb and have no memory. Freaking kids. Old people. Ugh. Well, this video was all about hitting the dyno uh, today, but sadly that was canceled. We were actually on the way there and we got notified that the event was canceled due to rain. Very disappointing. So I figured we'd go ahead and just post the video we took about prepping the car for the dyno and just do that instead. But anyway, not much is going to happen in this video except getting frustrated at the car. Pretty typical for us. Oh, and by the way, he's not in most of the video. School. <sighs> Wasting his life. Well, that was a lot of fun. I went to pick up my new spark plug wires and spark plugs for Junior's car, which did not come in, and ended up getting stranded there. The car has been increasingly difficult to start lately, and the battery just finally fried. The test of the system showed that my voltage regulator was uh, worn out, which is what cooked my battery. And initially, the battery tested fine in the car. But when it wouldn't even take a jump start to get me out of the parking lot, I knew something was wrong. Took the battery out of the car, had it tested independently on its own, and it was fried. So now we have a brand new voltage regulator and a brand new battery. Now watch how fast it fires up, Lenny Running Deer. The bump of the key fires right up. Not too much timing. It's just a cooked battery and a voltage regulator. It's Friday before Dino Day, and my spark plugs and spark plug wires are finally here. What's the best cure for cheap, generic $20 spark plug wires that keep falling apart? Well, that's real simple. The same exact set of $20 generic spark plug wires, of course. And while we're doing budget things, I found these for $3 online, $3 a piece, which is $1.50 each cheaper than the auto lights that are currently in it, which I'm going to pull. Are these as good or better than the auto lights? I don't know. Are they the same heat range, cooler, hotter? I don't know. What I do know is they are the cheapest spark plugs I could find. And NGK has a pretty good reputation, so they're going in the car. The spark plugs are out. As is normal with me, number eight took as long as all other seven combined. That's just me and small block forwards and number eight cylinder. They all look pretty much the same. Uh, Fairly down the middle, a little bit of tan, a little bit of black. Nothing horrible to report. On to the wires. Spark plug wires are on. As you can see, it has started raining because, of course, it has. The weather says it's a zero precipitation day. Nice, dry day. So, of course, it's raining. And because I'm me, I managed to rip the rubber grommet out of my breather cap from the valve cover, which means... I could fire it up, test fire it and all that, but I can't drive anywhere until I pull this valve cover and get the, oh, maybe I can get it out with my finger. But I've got to get that out and find a new grommet, which means I can't go test drive it. Good times. Started raining again. If you can't tell, I'm already feeling kind of rough. I worked last night, work on the car today, take a nap, work tonight, dyno tomorrow, and then come home and go back to work tomorrow night, so... I'm trying not to get wet and cold because I already feel like crap. So let's see if this thing will start. Lynn Running Deer. True cold start. It hasn't run in three days. I should connect the battery. Let's try that again. True cold start after three days. New plugs, new wires. Come on, don't embarrass me. Come on, cold idle cam, let's go. There we go. Well, I'm 
I'm supposed to change the oil in the filter and I wanted to pull the the plug out of the transmission and check the transmission fluid because it's been a year or so and um, it's actually raining now and um, I'm not going to do any of that unless it stops raining in the next hour or so. I guess I'm going to go find a rubber grommet for our valve cover breather. It finally quit raining for a minute. I got the old grommet dug out and I got a new grommet. And with the grommet, I got this also. I know it's kind of generic, but you know what? The grommet itself was $8 and this thing was 15 with the grommet. So it matches all our other Edelbrock stuff, except this is clean for now. That'll change. Finally got the car up in the air. Got a couple of minutes in between rain. First thing I noticed, um, yeah, that's a little bit of transmission fluid coming out of the tail shaft bushing, which isn't good, but that shouldn't be the end of the world, right? Except that I pulled the drain plug and I can't physically locate any fluid inside this thing. That's less than ideal. These things are supposed to have fluid, right? No? Yes? Someone help me out here. Luckily for us, we happen to have a quick access hatch installed in our transmission right now. So I'm just going to run a little hose down there and start pouring some fluid in it. There's absolutely nothing sketchy going on here. Trust me. There we go. All refilled and resealed. I want to make it clear that the transmission was not empty. Empty is a very powerful word and it has a lot of negative connotations. It was not empty. I will acknowledge it was lower than I would like to admit. However, there was some fluid left in it. Note to myself and the boy, change the rear transmission seal immediately. You can see that we kind of missed our six month window on our oil change, our synthetic 6,000 mile oil, but we only put like 1,300 miles on it, so it should be fine. Mostly, I'm more concerned with glitter in the oil, and the oil looks really good. The oil's doing oil things. I don't see any milkshake. I don't see any glitter. There's no reflection. So the oil was still oiling and doing its thing. So time to change it before it starts raining hard again and get going. Fired right up. There are no leaks. Well, no new leaks, but that's a whole nother topic for another day. It's not important right now. What's important? is the filter, the drain plugs aren't leaking. It's full of oil and it sounds good. I cannot stress enough that you absolutely should not go and drive your rear wheel drive American muscle car in the rain on drag radials. Let's do this thing. Why? What is going on here? That is, that is fuel. I mean, it's better than oil, but why are you running so fat all of a sudden? What is happening? Ugh. Good morning. Look who finally joined me. Someone chose education over prepping the car for the dyno. It's never going to get you anywhere in life, boy. I told you before, I don't have an education. Look at me. It turned out fine. We are finally off to try to dyno this thing. And good news! It's raining and it's wet. And we're on drag radials. Even better news. It's just humid enough we need the defroster, which means heat, and yet it's 
in the mid 60s so it's not cold enough to need the heat which i'm sure will be perfectly comfortable all day right yeah this will be fun we're off to lethal performance this morning now this is going to be a rather somber event possibly i don't know i don't know the people at lethal performance but this is a fundraiser for the family of danny g um he was a member of Lethal Performance who died suddenly at a very young age, and this is a fundraiser. So we're going to go and take a couple of turns on the dyno and donate money to the family and things like that. So um, I'm expecting it to be kind of a somber event. I don't know how much filming we'll do. We'll, we'll definitely film the car on the dyno, but we'll kind of have to wait and see the atmosphere of the event before you know we we know whether we can film or not and I'd like to say rest in peace to Danny G of Lethal Performance I did not know the man but we're going to go and support the family and donate to the family today and we are off on our wet drag radial adventure I'm sure it'll be fine it's only like 40 miles or something <laughs> Well, sadly, we're back home. We were on the way to the dyno. We gassed up. We got notified that the event was canceled due to rain. It's very disappointing not only to us, but to the family of Danny G uh, that the fundraiser had to be canceled due to rain. That's very disappointing. Um, the event was rescheduled for January, but unfortunately, we will not be able to go then. It's very disappointing for us, and that means less money for the family which is very disappointing. Anyway, we wish them the best and God bless. I'd like to take a moment and kind of rant about the car community. Just because there's a couple of drops of water on the road does not mean you can't take your car out. That's not how that's supposed to work. As much as I joke and exaggerate about the, you know, driving around in drag slicks, I mean, not drag slicks, street slicks or drag radials or something, we were doing it. We kept it under 2,500 RPMs at half throttle, and the car was perfectly manageable. The other day when I was complaining about it, it's because I was giving it too much throttle, of course, like always. But today we had a destination in mind. We were trying to get there. I was taking it seriously, and the car was perfectly manageable in the rain. And as you've seen before, we've taken the car out in the rain before. You just have to be careful. We don't have to cancel every car event for a few drops of water on the road. It's very disappointing for the family, and I do hope that they raise plenty of money in January. I wish we could be there. Anyway, thanks for watching, and again, God bless the family of Danny G from Lethal Performance, and we wish them the best. I've never been there, and I don't know those people, but I feel bad for them, and uh, I hope their event goes well in January. Thanks for watching. I wish we would have had a little happier ending.